What's up everybody, back for another vlog, and today is kind of an impromptu vlog. Not really, but kinda, and that's because uh, I didn't anticipate creating a vlog anytime in the near future, but lo and behold, I was tagged by a friend of mine and fellow beer tuber, Han Yolo, over at Han Yolo Review. So, he was tagged by Kyle over at No Hype Beer Reviews, another friend of mine, another fellow beer tuber, who was also uh, tagged by the I Drank Beer Guys. They have uh, their Instagram page, they have a YouTube channel, and I believe they started this. So the premise of this whole tagging video is five non-beer related things about yourself. So Kyle did his, he tagged Han, and then Han tagged Brandon over at Craft Beer Pours, Matt over at Massive Beer Reviews, and myself. And when it comes to my channel, I like to keep it mostly beer-centric 99.9% .9 of the time, but I thought this would be pretty fun to do. Now, be forewarned, I'm super boring in general. I'm a boring person. So outside of beer, probably not a lot of things that you guys should know or care to know about me, but I'm try to do the best I can. So I appreciate Han tagging me at the end of this video. I am supposed to tag three other fellow beer tubers, which I will do. So without any further ado, let's get right into the list. So number one is going to be the most personal thing on the list. And I wanna mention this to you guys for a couple reasons. I haven't updated you guys on this issue for quite a while now. And on top of that, um, it's been something that I've dealt with my whole life. So first and foremost, number one on the list, I did number two, number one on the list, I was born with something that they call a bicuspid aortic valve. So a normal person's aortic valve has three leaflets, mine has two. Uh, what the aortic valve does, uh, aortic valve does is regulates blood flow to your aorta. So when you have only two leaflets, it doesn't do such a good job. Uh, since I was born with it, over my lifespan, it's going to deteriorate to the point where at some point in the future, and maybe even the near future, I'm going to need open heart surgery. And I've talked about this on the channel a few times. And it's something I've dealt with my whole life. Uh, like I said, it's, it was something, it was a birth defect. I was born with it. Every single year, I get an echocardiogram and meet with my cardiologist. And, you know, a couple years ago, uh, actually it was about a year and a half ago now, my cardiologist really said, you know, you got to start thinking about open heart surgery at some point in the near future because you're getting close to, you know, where you're going to need to get it replaced. And that kind of sparked me over the last nine and a half months dropping 50 pounds. So if you go look at some of my earlier videos on my channel from last year, early last year, April, May, I am pretty damn fat. I'm still fat. I need another 25, 30 pounds to uh, drop off my body to get where I want to be. But uh, yeah, I lost 50 pounds in nine and a half months, and it was because of not only a channel, but also because of my condition, and I felt it was time to take it seriously. And if I do get open heart, it's only going to help with the recovery and whatnot. So, you know, you guys commenting uh, in the videos that I've, I've done, you know, last year and whatnot, mentioning my weight loss and just giving me, you know, a lot of positive support has helped me lose the weight, but it's also helped me feel better about myself and, you know, be healthier as well. So... I was born with a bicuspid aortic valve. I'm gonna need open heart at some point in the near future. And I'm mentioning this not only because it's something that, you know, you might not know about me, but it's also uh, something that might affect the channel at some point. And uh, it's definitely gonna affect my lifestyle once I need open heart. So I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there for the first one. And uh, now we'll go with more uplifting and positive, maybe positive things on the list. I don't know, we'll see. So number two, um, if you have pretty much watched the channel, uh, you know that I am a huge, absolutely huge sports fan, uh, sports junkie. But even though I watch a ton of different sports, I don't watch every single sport, most of them. Uh, there are two that, for me, I follow pretty much all the time when they're in season, when they're out of season, doesn't matter. And that is pro football and pro hockey. So the NFL and the NHL. Obviously, I'm a huge Buffalo Sabres fan living here in the Western New York area, in the Buffalo, New York area. I love the Buffalo uh, Sabres. When it comes to football, though, I am not... I am a Buffalo Bills fan, but they're not my favorite team. And that might sound kind of weird, but when I was growing up, I really was fixated on individuals in sports. So I love Deion Sanders because of his speed and kind of his attitude and stuff. Well, it was, it was kind of funny. It was always interesting. Um, and I just love fast players. It didn't matter if it was football or hockey or whatever. And in 1995, uh, the Seattle Seahawks drafted Joey Galloway, who went to the Ohio State University. And... I really like Joey Galloway, so I was like, I'm just going to follow the Seahawks at this point. Up to that point, I, like I said, I liked the Bills, but I wasn't a fan. Like, I would root for them, like, when they went to the Super Bowl. Sure, I wanted to see them winning up, but I, I didn't consider myself, like, a fan of them. I just kind of liked whatever team Dion was on, and just I just followed football in general. So once uh, Galloway was drafted, well, I was like, I'm just going to follow the Seahawks, and he then ended up getting traded to the Dallas Cowboys at some point. I think it was, like, around 2000, maybe late 90s. 
but I stuck with the Seahawks and I stuck with the Seahawks because at that point I was, you know, I was vested in them. I, you know, were, I was following them for four or five years at that point. I was like, I'm just gonna be a fan. So I'm still a fan of the Seattle Seahawks to this day. I've been a fan for about 24 years now. And uh, yeah, so I'm a Seahawks fan. I still like the Bills. I want to root for them. They're like my second team. I want to see them still succeed unless they're going against Seahawks. And then I love the Buffalo Sabres, but I love all sports. Uh, just, I've been a sports junkie. Growing up here in the Western New York area, uh, you pretty much had two pro sports teams, the Bills and Sabres. So it was pretty much playing, you know, ice hockey or street hockey or roller hockey. And then you would, would play football with your friends. And that's pretty much the sports that I played. So, uh, yeah, I'm a pretty big sports fan. I love, love pretty much everything in general. Most of the stuff I watch anyway. Uh, so number three, um, to kind of, you know, piggyback off number two, I love the Western New York area, the Buffalo, New York area. And that might, to you guys, that would be like, well, what's special about that or whatever. I love the area I live in. Well, Buffalo in general gets kind of, I don't know, it gets a bad rap when it comes to national media. Everyone talks about, you know, how terrible the weather is here and just, you know, when it comes to the sports teams, how bad they are. The Bills lost four Super Bowls. Uh, a lot of times when it comes to free agency in those sports, they always are like, oh, why would you ever want to go to, why would you pick Buffalo over New York City, you know? Just, you know, it's, well, it's comparing apples to oranges, but there are a lot of people who do pick Buffalo over New York City. There are people who pick Buffalo over a lot of other places. A lot of athletes end up retiring in Western New York because it's a great place to raise a family. All the people here are, well, not, I can't say all, but most of the people here are really super nice. Uh, you're really close to the Canadian border. Uh, within a four-hour four hour drive, you can hit up Toronto, which has millions of people, different cultures, fantastic. You can go to Detroit. You can go to Cleveland, Pittsburgh. There's a lot of different places you can explore, uh, basically on a day drive. It's just a really nice area. And on top of that, uh, Han, in his list, he talked about how he liked warmer weather. I like cooler weather. Fall is probably my favorite season. Now, as far as the seasons go in Western New York, are they, are, are they all great? No, winter... You know, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's crazy cold. Sometimes you do have, you know, two, three feet of snow on the ground, but that can kind of overblown in the national media. Uh, fall here is beautiful. Spring here is beautiful. Summer's, you know, really hot. If you like it hot, it's a little bit too humid for me. So summer's not my favorite in Western New York, but you get four unique seasons. I couldn't really picture myself living anywhere else. I do like traveling and whatnot, but this is home. This is probably where I will always call home, and I love it here. So, uh, yeah, I love the Western New York area. I love the Buffalo, New York area, and, uh, yeah, it gets kind of a bad rap in the national media, and a lot of people might look down upon it. Eric Gilbert, look at you. Rochester, New York's terrible, whatever. Listen, a lot of great people here, a lot of good stuff going on, so I love this place. Number four, uh, this is gonna... <laughs> I might lose some subscribers here. I might. People might look down at me, but I am a wrestling fan. Okay, and I've been a wrestling fan since I've been like five years old. I remember going over uh, Average Pops. He had a friend that uh, got the pay-per-views back in the mid 80s. And I remember going over there, I think it was for WrestleMania two and three, when it was just starting out WrestleMania, right? So the, the first one and then, but two and three is like the, mo three is like the most iconic one. And uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it. I uh, grew up just watching it all the time. And uh, I really got into it in the mid 90s once WCW uh, Monday Night Show started and kind of the Monday Night Wars between them and WWF at that time, now WWE started. Um, so yeah, I watch it to this day. Not nearly as much as I used to. I don't follow it as much, but I still watch it. And uh, yeah, it's been something that's I've been watching for over 30 years and I still like it to this day. Now, a lot of people will say, you watch that fake stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I always like to do the comparison to like other stuff. So you look at wrestling and wrestling is basically in a nutshell, it's a form of entertainment. You can call pro wrestling, you can call it sports entertainment, you can call it wrestling, you can call it whatever. But at the end of the day, it's basically like a live theater, right? It, it's a show. It's it's art with athleticism. Yes, the, the the moves and stuff and whatnot, not everything is fake. It's choreographed. It's predetermined. You know who's going to win and lose. You uh, have a pretty good idea of, you know, what's going to happen in the match. But, you know, some of those <laughs> some of those moves are real. You can ask people like Hulk Hogan who's had, you know, hip replacements and knee replacements, people who have broken legs and broken necks. You can get hurt when you retire a lot. More often than not, these guys are pretty much spent from the years, uh, you know, in the ring. So it's not fake. It's predetermined. It's choreographed. And if you like comic books, if you like um, superhero movies, if you're a huge into Marvel, there's not a real big difference between that and pro wrestling. Um, comics, somebody wrote. Somebody created those characters. They all of a sudden are now on the big screen. Marvel movies are, are just crazy. But none of that's real. You're watching a two-hour movie of characters that were created. The stuff on the screen isn't real. So what's different? What is the difference between that and, and wrestling? Not much. It's all the same. Uh, superhero movies not frowned upon. Wrestling frowned upon. 
But whatever, at the end of the day, I like pro wrestling. I'm not going to apologize for liking it. And I'm probably always going to like it. I'm going to be 80 years old and still watch it pro wrestling. And it is what it is, but I enjoy it. I know Sean over at Nerd Sense and like a good friend of mine and former beer tuber, Lee Russell, he really likes wrestling. So I know there's other beer tubers that like wrestling. So come out of, come out, come out of the shadows. Just let it be known. It's okay. We'll, we'll survive together. Uh, and the last one, the fifth and final um, non-beer related thing about myself I love comedy, whether, and I know a lot of you, again, it's gonna be like, I love comedy too, but I, I love all kinds of different comedy, but uh, I probably like some comedians that maybe you don't, or maybe that you kind of forgot about or whatever. I grew up obviously in the 90s as a teenager and whatnot, and I loved SNL back then. So Chris Farley um, and uh, Phil Hartman and Adam Sandler, and I'm talking Chris Farley, you know, Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. Tommy Boy's a classic movie. You guys know I have the Callahan auto shirt that I wear occasionally. I've watched that movie over a hundred times with my niece. She absolutely loved it. And I love Chris Farley. I wish he would have passed away. I'm sure he would have made some really, really amazing movies. And uh, Adam Sandler back in his prime, the Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, um, you know, wedding singer, pretty much like 95 to 98. He had some great uh, comedy albums that were just absolutely phenomenal and hilarious to this day. Just absolutely great. I know a lot of you look at Adam Sandler nowadays and you're just like, wow, Adam Sandler, really? Back then, he was fantastic. Also, Dave Chappelle, one of the one of my favorite comment. Uh, a comedians of all time. Uh, Chappelle Show, if you really sit back and think about it, Chappelle Show has been off the air for over 15 years, around 15, 15, 16 years. And the amount of memes and quotables that we still use to this day is unreal. And that show only lasted two seasons. They had the third season without his like consent. Just absolutely amazing show. Uh, my favorite my favorite comedian nowadays is probably Bill Burr. Uh, I love his stand-up. I really like his podcast. And I like his uh, animated Netflix show, F is for Comedy, or F is for Family, F is for Comedy. F is for Family, fantastic show as well. Bill Burr, I just, I love when he gets on a rant and stuff. I just can't stop laughing. And that's the one thing about comedy in general. Whenever I've ever felt down or, you know, just having a shitty day or just kind of bored or whatever, I throw something on and I'm laughing my ass off and everything is right with the world again. So comedy has always been there for me and probably always will be. So yeah, that was five non-beer related things about myself. Um, I know I went crazy personal to begin with, but then I kind of went into other hobbies and whatnot. So yeah, it's kind of fun to do. So appreciate you tagging me, uh, Han. I, I, I did enjoy it. I didn't think I enjoyed it as much as I did kind of just sitting here, you know, talking off the top of the dome piece. I don't have any notes or anything. I just kind of remembered everything off uh, the top of my head and uh, I think it went okay. But anyway, three people I'm going to tag. So I'm friends with a lot of beer tubers in the US, in Canada, and in the UK. So I'm going to tag one from each country. So we're gonna start off in Canada and the guy I'm gonna tag is my buddy, my good buddy, Chris, over at Off The Tenth. I wanna see uh, what he says. He's very creative. I know he has a lot of different hobbies and stuff, so it'll be interesting to see what he says about uh, himself because uh, I know everybody out there is dying to know. I know I am anyway, so gonna tag Chris and shout out to him. Uh, the other guy across the pond over in the UK, it will be Craig, or as some people like to refer to him as Greg, over at Kent Beer Reviews. Uh, Craig is very reserved, quiet for the most part, you know, so hopefully he opens up here, just lets us know a little bit about himself. Maybe, I hope so. So I'm gonna tag Craig and shout out to his channel as well. And last but not least, I'm gonna tag somebody that I know absolutely does not wanna be tagged, and that is my good friend and fellow beer tuber, Paul, over at PA Brew News, Paul hates being tagged, but you know what? It's gotta be done, Paul. It's gotta be done. And I know he's gonna do it live and it's gonna be, he's gonna complain the whole time he's doing it, but it's still gonna be awesome because Paul is one talented mother effer. He just, his paintings and just the stuff that he's into, like the music and, you know, he loves movies and stuff. So it should be a good list from him. So I'm gonna tag him as well. So Chris over at Off the 10th, Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews and Paul over at PA Brew News. All three of those guys are being tagged. And uh, yeah, appreciate everybody. Let me take a sip of this delicious Kolsch. So yeah, I appreciate everybody stopping by for another vlog. It's been a while since we've done one of these tagged videos and uh, I enjoyed it. So appreciate everybody stopping by. And until the next vlog, and, and one, one last thanks to Han for tagging me. I do appreciate it, buddy. So take it easy, everyone. Cheers.